Throughout history, conflict has been an ever-present companion to human societies. Amidst these clashes, diverse warriors emerged, embodying the distinct aspects of their cultures. As we sift through historical accounts, one question continuously emerges. How formidable were these ancient warriors? Popular media often distorts our perception, portraying these historical figures as either excessively powerful or unremarkable. The Spartans, glorified in movies and books for their warrior code, exemplify this phenomenon. Thanks to their extreme methods and some notable moments on the battlefield, these warriors carried the reputation as some of the strongest warriors of their time. But is it true? Were the Spartans actually the strongest warriors in ancient Greece? The Spartans were warriors of the Greek city-state of Sparta who trained for their entire lives and were respected for their daunting bravery and undying devotion to Sparta. One thing is for sure, Spartan life wasn't easy. Sparta's children were assessed for weakness at birth, and if anything was even slightly off, they would be thrown in a chasm. It may seem cruel, but there was no place for weakness in a militaristic society. Growing into childhood, things for Sparta's boys didn't get any easier. At the age of seven, they started the next stage of their training, the agogi. This notorious and severe training was the centerpiece of Spartan society, where children learned that being a Spartan was knowing how to rule and how to be ruled, as the most important thing in Sparta's society was that Sparta was above all else. During the agogi, the children were subjected to grueling instruction and competition that pit them against one another as they learned the realities of war. There was no respite for these young trainees either. The children didn't get to go home at the end of the day and lived in a communal setting under harsh conditions. This was to both prepare them for brutal war away from home and to foster the idea that they weren't an individual person but part of a cohesive fighting machine. Physical endurance was one of the main goals of the brutal training and the boys were left to survive in all conditions with just a thin tunic and no shoes. They would be pit against each other in combat-filled exercises, where losers faced punishments ranging from beatings and humiliation to removal from the program. Removal from the program would have been considered worse than death to these boys, as failing the agogi would result in a purposeless lifetime of shame. Pain and discomfort were not just tolerated, but expected and frequently dished out in the form of ritualistic beatings, as the boys were taught to not show emotion in both life and battle. Though this training may seem insane in modern times, ancient historians credited it with producing formidable warriors who put Sparta ahead of their own lives. Xenophon commended the Spartan system for creating soldiers with unparalleled discipline and courage, stating the Agogi gave Spartans an unwavering loyalty to the state, which gave them an advantage on the battlefield. Plutarch also highlighted the positives of the Spartan system, which he credits with creating a cohesive and disciplined society. He credits this to the fact Spartans were taught that selflessness and obedience were foundational values during their time in the Agoge. Spartan society was also designed to allow this lifestyle, with all essential jobs and functions being performed by a slave class called the Helots. This class, made up of people subjugated by Sparta, were hated and sometimes killed, but they were crucial as they enabled Sparta's military-focused society. On top of its training program, Spartans are known today for the famous Battle of Thermopylae, portrayed in the popular movie 300, where 300 Spartans fought to the death against a Persian force sometimes stated to be as large as 2.5 million. This battle was during the Persian invasion of Greece in 480 BC. The Greek city-states, who normally fought amongst themselves, formed an alliance to try and save themselves from Persian subjugation. King Leonidas of Sparta was put in charge of the Greek alliance's forces and positioned them at a choke point to hold off the Persian advance long enough for other states to evacuate and form a line of defense. Though the Spartans did fight to the death and lasted three days despite all odds, this story only highlights the Spartans. Historian Herodotus wrote there were also around 900 other allies fighting with them during their last stand. After the Peloponnesian War ended in 404 BC, Sparta began its gradual decline. Sparta faced challenges in maintaining control over the regions it had previously dominated, which were now plagued with internal conflicts and power struggles. Its allies also started to move away from it as Sparta treated them harshly. During this time of peace, the Spartans began to run into societal issues as their rigid political system was falling behind other city-states which chose a more wide-ranging educational system that treated people as actual people, 
not just cogs of a military machine. Aristotle highlighted these issues in his writing Politics. There he criticized the Spartans' single-minded focus on military training, noting their strength comes at the expense of cultural and intellectual developments. The historian Thucydides also had these critiques in his History of the Peloponnesian War, noting that the rigid structure of Sparta fostered an inability to adapt on both the battlefield and when it came to ever-evolving societal norms which matter when you're trying to hold influence on captured provinces. But starting in 376 BC, the Boeotian War saw Thebes, under the leadership of the renowned general Epaminondas, significantly damage Sparta's reputation, starting with the decisive Battle of Leuctra in 371 BC. During the battle, Epaminondas employed the famous Thebian wedge formation, which proved highly effective against the Spartans. The Spartans were used to their phalanx formation dominating on battlefields, but at Lacutra, Epaminondas' wedge formation focused its attack on one side of the phalanx. By attacking one side, Epaminondas was able to engage half the formation with the majority of his troops, while preventing the other half from moving with the rest of his forces. This gives the Spartans very few options, as the sides of their formation get wedged between the main and secondary Theban assaults and can't advance or help one another. This defeat would have many lasting implications. First, the defeat severally weakened Sparta, and the Helots once again took the opportunity to rise against their hated masters. The sudden lack of slaves sent huge ripples throughout Sparta. The city-state couldn't wage war or even function without a slave class to do everything. The defeat also shattered the confidence of the remaining Spartans, who have rigidly relied on their phalanx formation. They were now left looking for answers, and because of their society's lack of innovation or great thinkers, they couldn't really come up with a solution. This led to another defeat at the Battle of Mantinea in 362 BC. Although the Thebans initially achieved success, Epaminondas was fatally wounded during the battle, leading to a Theban retreat and eventual withdrawal. While Sparta continued to exist as a city-state after its defeat at Leuctra and Mantinea, its political and military authority was significantly weakened, and it would never be the same. The final blow to Sparta's independence came with the rise of Macedon under Philip II and later Alexander the Great. In 331 BC, following Alexander's conquest of the Persian Empire, he demanded the submission of all Greek city-states, including Sparta. Although the Spartans initially resisted, they were eventually subdued by Alexander's forces. Despite its illustrious history as a formidable military power, Sparta was ultimately absorbed into the expanding Macedonian Empire. It's rather ironic, Sparta gained its reputation through its rigid discipline and a strict military focus, only to lose its independence due to the same rigid systems and one-dimensional thinking. So, though the Spartans were tough and brave, they were far too rigid, and despite having almost 100 years to develop new strategy and advance their society, the Spartans chose to maintain their status quo of exploitation and conquest, while failing to imagine that maybe the tactics of war will change. Despite their legendary reputation, the Spartans may have been the most dedicated warriors of ancient Greece, but they weren't the strongest. What they are is a lesson in the saying, don't work harder, work smarter. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and let us know what you think in the comments below. And remember, for more captivating history content, please subscribe to the channel. You can also find reels and other short history videos on our Instagram page. If you want to support the channel, make a purchase from one of our Amazon store links in the description. As an Amazon influencer, we get a percentage of all items sold through our stores and you get high quality products sold and delivered by Amazon. It's a win for everyone.